Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, we are recording now. Thank you, Kevin. Sure. So yeah, under view options. So this is where you'd set up your, your default pass. So in the case of the server, this is where it's going to store the logs that it's retrieving. On your remote computers, if you have access to this, this is where you would pull up to say open a log. So that way you don't have to download one that's already been downloaded on the server. Um, and then duplicating, you know, efforts and and data and disk space and all that stuff. So, um, so the main ones you have are retrieve logs. Um, you can put device profiles in there also into a, a shared drive. Those are basically the setting files of the um, a meter. So if you have configured a meter and you say, I want to save the profile, then it would save it to that directory unless you changed it as you were um, changing it. Uh, another one is the device profile reports. So that is the, it's either a text based or a uh, HTML based uh, printout of all the settings of the meter versus the actual uh, profile file is a file you could open with communicator and manipulate and then download to a meter or a you just want to, if you're replacing a meter, for example, just open that and then download it to the new meter, for example. Uh, the archive logs, so the way the logs work is they just keep adding on to a, uh, a database log file. And obviously those will get large over time. So what you can do is set it up for, let's say once a year to archive. Um, unfortunately, there's no real, you don't really set a time frame for how much you're archiving it basically closes the whole record, a uh, whole database and just stores it into whatever file or folder you set up here and then starts a new one. So if you were looking at logs and you wanted to go back to next year, you would have to go over to the archive log and open that one up to look at uh, older data. Um, so that's just kind of a, a space saving uh, thing and keep the databases from, from getting too large. Um, a, a key part of this is your meter names. So we won't go ahead and set up, I'll show you how to do the automatic logging, but we won't set it up today because first thing you want to do is sort through your meters, find out if they're all named properly because what it does, it takes the meter name, uh, also sometimes called the device, uh, what do they call it? Designation, I think is a term they use in the setup. Uh, they use that as the the file name that the log database will be recorded under. So, and you don't want to try to change that after it's already started. So we won't set that. Um, and the rest of these, to be honest, I'm, I'm not sure um, if you need to. Uh, I, I guess you could technically put these all on a shared drive, uh, may help. I just, so the, the connection database is a um, kind of like a phone book of all your meters. So for that's kind of helpful for the other um, remote PCs. Uh, it just gives you kind of an address book of all the all the meters out there. So um, how often? How often, uh, John? How often do you guys plan to access these logs and all this thing? Because the server. Could just hold everything, and when you need it, you can just copy and paste it from you know to a, a shared drive from there if you need to access it, or or we can share that folder, and you can access it. Uh, you can map the the drive to your computer, and then access it that way. That way, it all stays in a single server, uh, and you know the servers are backed up; they're virtual machines and all that, so it's pretty okay. safe. I um. So I imagine we'll have to access a lot as we're setting up the meters. Um, and some of the other needs of the data are we have to have the ability to get it over to the energy information system. And um, yeah, well, that's uh, automatic. I think that's behind the scenes through some API thing. OK. Uh, but but uh, what I'm saying is this could all stay like this local. And we can just share 
that one drive that's going to store. Uh, if anything, do, does it need to be under the users folder? Could it just be under its own, you know, C drive, Electro Industries, rather yeah. than a user? Because the user mm -hmm. sometimes can get corrupted, and there goes all that data. That, yeah, really whatever, point. whatever, whatever driver folder you want to use is yeah, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Can we uh, can we just change it all to be just C drive, Electro Industries instead of users public documents it's also easier to share yeah that's a really good point walter um just doing it exactly the opposite way um awesome um is, is there a d drive on this server there is yeah let me, there is an e i think yeah yeah uh, let's let's put it in there in e okay yeah Wow, this is a tiny little drive. Oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, put it in there. It'll be easier to expand that one if we have okay. to. Got it. Um, OK. Uh, I'll build that out separately so I'm not wasting everybody's time because that's going to have to go. Well, yeah, you can do that later. Yeah. Oh, I was just, I guess, no, never mind. I was looking at these. I thought they were all in different folders. But does it matter to have those uh, separated out? Uh, yeah, it probably does make it cleaner to, uh, yeah, so especially I'll, I'll, with, yeah, with the me number of meters you have, um, it would create, yeah, uh, each folder is going to have a lot of stuff in it anyway. So, um, <laughs> I think just, cool. just on the, uh, housing project, I forget how many meters we have, but that, that means, you know, okay. 50, cool. 50 meters, 50 files just in one, one folder. Yeah, it, it's just like five or six folders, but are, I'll, I'll, I'll do that separately, so I'm not wasting well, But qu question for you, are we doing this right now? Because if we are, then we need to make the change right now before we click the uh, OK. I know. Uh, so, I, this is, so this is just for, for logs. This is not for the database itself, right? Uh, the, the log is, is the database. Yeah, everything. So, yeah. The, and, oh. I guess to, to clarify, the, the log is what's inside the meter. When it, it downloads that, it puts it into a database. That's, so to okay. kind of clar clarify that a little better. OK, so can you, yeah, you yeah. can either, yeah, there you go. But I think if you change it on the path itself, it creates the folder automatically. So maybe you want to delete that folder. Uh, Oh, it has to browse. It doesn't create. That's why I was saying it's it's the older or the, the different style where it's looking for. I that's, see. I can't type it in manually either, so it's got to sort of be there. Oh. Um, yeah. So and and is it on? Is it underscore? Electro Industries or just? I think uh, there's a space. I thought it was. I mean, it doesn't. Yeah. I guess. Just want to make it exact. Some some programs don't like it when it's different. But. Yeah. Uh, so does it need that full path then, or does it? I mean. Yeah. So. The communicator X. Mm -hmm. Can you can you click within the directory right now, or or you have to browse only? There's no. There's no. You can't edit it inside there. I'm just going. To, oh, here we go. So it already created these. Okay. That's kind of uh, weird. Well, those are options. Oh, has it? Oh, it's already been installed. Sorry. So yeah, it's already it's done. Okay. So done. never mind. There's and nothing we can, <laughs> we can't, we can't change it. Okay. Well, no, we probably can. Well, go ahead, Kevin. Can we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can, you can change it. And my bad. Um, you can just, you can just click on there. So here, uh, let's change it real quick. Yeah. Well, here, let me. Uh, Uh, we're probably making this a little more complicated then. <laughs> there you go. That looks in. It says C or E. I think you made it on E. 
think you're right. Yeah, it was E. So I guess while we're waiting for me to stumble through this, um, Kevin, Sean was asking earlier about getting the live data out. Is that um, through that post query of database? Um, sorry, let me get rid of this call. Um, the, the live data. Um, so yeah, you can you can still pull the data uh, in real time with the building automation system if, if that's the question. Yes. Um, okay. So yeah, the the logs is it, what it is. The meters internally are logging stuff. Um, typically, every fifteen minutes, it'll it'll log certain values. And then it also be, do things based on events, um, so uh, you know out of limits and uh, waveform captures and things. So it'll it'll store that internally, and that that's what we call the logs in the meter. And then the software will go out, and it does a um, somewhere around the old, you know one of the screens you might see it'll say partial download. So what it does is it looks at the database and says you know I have all the all the data for this meter up until yesterday. So I'm only going to uh, download from yesterday through, you know, current time. And so it saves time in, in downloading and just keeps adding to that, that database. Um, so that database isn't, isn't necessarily open. I mean, it, it, if you really uh, wanted to try to get into it with some other kind of software, that would be a a whole other conversation, but basically it's set up for uh, looking at it through this COM EXT or COM PQA software. And then they also have a uh, billing software, which you guys don't need because you have a, a system that does that. Um, well, that was that was the question, though, um, was how to how to do that um, connection between those between those uh, uh, pieces of software. Oh, well, uh, well like, the GIG software kind of does that itself. Um, so for, for example, what we're setting up here is, is kind of twofold is one is when you go to uh, retrieve a log, where is it going to store it? And then when you go to open a log, where's it going to open it from, which is you know the same place wherever they've been retrieved to. Um, so in the same, the same list is where, what you'll want to put on Sean's computer. So his default directories are the same. So that way, if he goes to open a log, it looks on the server, which has already downloaded the log, uh, you know, probably the night before. Um, from the standpoint of probably electricians, if they're going to look for a event that happened, let's say overnight, um, you know, that the data may not be there yet because it may have not downloaded, you know, may have downloaded before the event took place, in which case they may need, need to do another download just to bring it up to the database up to current time um, for that, if that makes sense. Um. No, um, I, I guess I was asking, how do we query that post-grade um, instance on this computer? But um, sorry that I have to step out real quick. Um, well, Brian, Brian has to call into it and check into another meeting, but he should be able to join us back shortly. Um, but I, I do have some questions in the interim. Uh, you're warm to drink. Um, so, so if we're telling the files where to store and then retrieving it from that same location, um, Walter, would we be able to provide access to 
users of this software to that particular folder? Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll share this folder on this server called Electro Industries. And if we are allowed to install the client on any other computers, we'll point it to the share folder oh. on the server. So everybody's accessing the same share folder from anywhere. Excellent. So through this, through this software, this, through this software. And this software will be used to look at all the data, I assume. Yes. yes. Yeah. And and it's this exact same setup you have here. You pull this up on all the remote computers and yeah. so they're all pointing to the same same database. Yeah, area. so yeah. So it'll be like a network shared drive, whatever the drive is letter at that time. Right. So for example, if you go and change the setting on a, a meter when you're done, you would want to save the profile. And if this default directory is already there, then it just saves it right to the uh, server uh, that may become a little tricky if uh, let's say you know Doug's out in the field and not connected to the network and does that so may have to just download it to his PC and then upload it to the server when he gets back to the office or something um, or you could you know when you get back to the office you could just pull it up again and and say save it um, so anyway so, yeah. so this is kind of the, the default so the the database um, so the, the database is, is really set up to use with its own software. Um, my understanding is you're you're still going to do your building automation, pull the meters, and that's going to get the data to your um, energy software that you're using. Um, but there is if you wanted to get into this database, I'd have to look into that to see how you access it. But the other thing you can do is set up some automatic report um, exporting and such, uh, which may be another uh, another meeting <laughs> to go over that. But that might be an easier way because you probably just want uh, pieces of data. You'd probably just want, let's say, consumption, KWH. Yes. Uh, you probably wouldn't want all the power quality stuff that usually is only, you know, if something happened, then you want to be able to go look at what happened. Um, from, from an energy perspective, I, I just want to get the totalized energy consumption and then the uh, demand over to the energy information system. That way we'll have a picture of, you know, how much energy we're consuming and what the instantaneous demand is. Uh, most of the data requests that we get externally are for those two items. They want to know consumption and, and if they're doing load studies, they're going to want to know what the demand is. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So that that might be through the um, what do they call it? Report exporter is, is the term. Um, so yeah, I can I can send you some info on how that works. And to be honest, I haven't used it a whole lot myself, but I've used a predecessor to that, so I think I have a basic idea. But you can basically it exports it to like an Excel file. And if I remember right, you can do um, some math in there, like, you know, add up columns and things like that. Um, so that would be a simple way to, to do that. Okay. Um, um, uh, so, the, so what Brian has on his screen currently, um, is it okay to hit apply? Oh, uh, yes. Yep. Looks like there's some issue with the uh, file path. Uh, go to the very first one, go top, and then, uh, no, yeah, right there, first path. And then just say, um, oh, there's a button, go, go to select a directory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go to select a directory. Yeah, Brian's mouse is very uh, sensitive. Okay. Then click OK and say Browse for Directory. And then uh, go to the E drive. Oh, it looks like he might have deleted the folder because thinking that it was going to create it automatically. Uh, right. Uh, so yeah, cancel. And let's just uh, create the directory. 
Just open the file explorer and create a directory called Electro Industries, capital E, capital I, on the E drive. Yep, right click, <clears throat> folder. Like that? Yeah. Uh, you can click apply. Should work. Invalid. Electro Industries. Uh, do I need to create the subfolder all the way down? No, no, no. Maybe try the browse again? Yeah. Oh, for some oh reason, there we go. <laughs> some reason it wasn't allowing. Yeah, it. Try, try the try the browse again, as Kevin mentioned. So close that. Browse for directory. Electro Industries. Okay. Um, but off all oh, but then it does that. Okay, just yeah. reset the path to the default. Click on the, it's okay. We're just going to put it wherever. Yeah, it's fine. That's okay. We'll just leave it there. Uh, I'm sure we can expand the C drive if we have to. My only concern is that, uh, okay, so it puts it under the public folder. So it's okay. That, that, means, that means it's available for everybody. Yeah. Um, Kevin, does that make it, I mean, can we, just copy and paste all of that data from OneDrive to to the other later on. If this is no, that's that's <laughs> manual work. You don't want to do that. Uh, it would only be one time though. Once we have all the folders built out, so you can go to the browse for directory. Um, yeah, I I think that would be fine. Um, if you wanted to change it, yeah, that that may be the case. Just copy them all manually to the one time and then change the names and mm -hmm. the path. Okay. All right. Yeah. For now, this should be okay. Yeah. But then apply. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So um, actually, if you want to open meter manager, so this is kind of the, the key to system. Ah, okay. So right now it's it's just started up with the automatic scan. So if you want, we could do this now. Um, so we do want to leave the disable automatic log retrieve retrieval clicked. Uh, let's see, where's my list here? I have um, of this. Uh, C22. So the beginning of the housing meters are 10.56.1.22. And goes up to dot 41. 41? Yes. And so, yeah, uh, and this is a good question for you. John and something you can you can move them later, but it, it puts them into groups and by default it it puts them into groups by the meter type. Um, you can move them around later and say okay I want all the meters from student housing in one grouping. Um, the grouping is just kind of how it's laid out, but then it's also how you can do scripts and the scripts. Um, I'll, I'll explain, but yeah, go ahead and hit save. You can. These so this will uh build a real scan script. 
Oh, does it does this computer have access to that those network addresses? It should. Yeah. Well, actually, that's all. That's all firewall rules, right? Does this? Uh, this... You can come back. Yeah, this can can be brought up later. Um. No, no, no. It has nothing to do. With it. You can try to ping. You can try to ping one of those addresses if it's alive. Can we try connecting manually? To see if he just one of those users. Oh, either way. Uh, Command prompt. Yeah. Do you know of an IP that's alive, or or they're all alive? Yeah, they should all be alive. I think you did it locally on your machine. <laughs> no, this is out. Oh, okay. It's a while. All right, that's good. Interesting. Okay. Looks okay. Yeah, this should see everything on the on the VLAN, right? Yeah. Looks like it's going for it. So might have been a. Well, I guess it cancel on this then, and we'll. Oh, I know what it might be. Uh, might be the 502 thing. Um, anyways, okay. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that. So let's see. Let's. Um, now let me let me look that up. All right, auto scan. I also have the, the manual pulled up here in the background. Um, <clears throat> okay, do we need? Let me try something here on this one. Um, oh, yeah, that's what it is. Okay. Um, Let's see, where is it? Uh, up towards the top, the icon says auto scan. I'll pull that up again. Um, okay, so what were our addresses? Were Oops, wrong spreadsheet. Um, so 10.56.1.22. And then after the 22, we're going to put colon 502. That's the port. I think that's, and then the last one was 41 and colon 502. And try that. Huh. Well, that's so what it should. Did I miss um, when I was loading the software? Uh, there was that post grade pop up thing, and I don't know if it installed completely correctly or not. Oh, okay. Well, we can, yeah, we can test one, I guess, direct or manually. Um, so let's see, let's do a manual connect. So, the, yeah, there you put in 1056.122. And 
go ahead and do a five percent. Uh, yeah, all the rest is correct. Do a connect, see if that'll find it. Uh huh. Are you able to add like multiple address ranges? So like you do all the 10.56 and then you can do all the 10. whatever the other network is. Or no, uh, or is it only I, one? I think it's just one range at a time, if uh, that's what you're asking. Yeah, because like, you probably could have scanned all the 10.56 first. Yeah. Instead, um, of, instead of jumping all the way to 10. whatever it was. Uh, he was trying to pull up just the most recent ones at housing, I think, just mm. to limit it to that. Okay. But if not manual, I guess works. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll find out what's going on with the automatic because that'll save you a whole lot of time. Yeah, um, but but what I'm saying is, you know, because you were jumping from 10.56 to like 10. Dot whatever it was. Uh, what was the other range? Uh, 41 was the end of the range. It was all in the same subnet. Yeah, click on that. So see how you're going from. Yeah, that's some auto whatever. I went from uh, here to. to Well, see how, okay, to 41. Okay, so now you're in the same one, but you were in different ones before. So this should work. Click, click save. Oh, you got to put in the 502, I believe, yeah. Yeah, I think you had something completely different before. Okay. Hmm. Still doesn't like it in the same range. Yeah, I still think, uh, can we run a repair on the install real quick and see if that fixes it? Oh, um... I I don't think that will fix it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that was a database thing, not not this part of it. Yeah, that's the one that I told you, you could ignore. It still works. Okay. Yeah. Um. Oh, something bloating there. What is that? Yeah, that was my point because it seems like it's just not working, more or less. Yeah, you'll still get the same error again, even if you re I, I tried this before. <laughs> I fully trust you. Yeah. <laughs> it, it looked like it, like it was trying to install something and didn't. Yeah. Find out if there's someone available in uh, tech support that could help with this. Um, If not, we can, you know, we were going to do everything today. I wanted to show you how some of the things work, but um, why is that loading there? No. Yeah. I'm going to mute you guys for a second and make a call on my other line here and see if I can find somebody there. Hey, uh, Kevin, real quick, is it yeah. going to, it, um, is it going to break anything if I close that software and try to run a repair on that install? Uh, it shouldn't, no. Yeah, okay. it should be fine. Robert, just to fill you in the, this PQA software, it, it's very similar to the Comi XD, but it gives us access to the meter manager. Mm -hmm. um, meter manager helps us schedule the retrieval of the logs so we don't have to do it manually. This is different than what we're using? It's, 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 it's essentially the same thing. <clears throat> okay. But with the added benefit of giving us access okay. to. So we have that professional software. licensing thing? Okay. It's only one license, um, but not everyone needs the license on the machine. We just need the one license to set up the retrieval, automatic oh. retrieval of the logs. Oh, okay. But everyone else that doesn't have the license has access to that data. Oh. To, let's say you got a meter, you want to look at the trend data for that uh -huh. data. It, um, you can pull those, those trends because it's stored on a particular folder. And then Walter is going to give everyone access to that folder so they can look at all the trends okay. for all shock meters. Um, and so as we commission new meters, 
will set up the box and then make sure it stores in that particular folder. And then over the next few months, we need to go back mm -hmm. at all of our prior installs and then set those up, set up the trend for the years. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of work to go back and pull all the, the data and set up all the data. But moving forward, it should be relatively straightforward. And to hire a meter guy. Is this the um, is this the, the actual version that, that we have? Yeah, this is on our servers right now. Well, on our server. Yeah, I'll, I'll send this to you. It's on the BS server. Um, what's that last icon say? Energy PQA. Which one? PQA. Oh yeah, the last one on the top. So right that's the only me. new thing to the old to what we had before. I mean, aside from all the the login and. Yeah. yeah, all the well, all the applications at the top yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, except for the energy PQA. Right, but right. the important thing is this is a this is a static database that's live and always running, not only running when you're running the software. Mm -hmm. So this can go out and pull data from the server or from the different meters all the time. So you, as long as everything's working, you shouldn't have to manually like that. Mm -hmm. And so like guys, over at NBF uh, B, this with this one, we should be able to pull up better than a 15 minute window. No. I mean, no. well, the software that the that we purchased mm -hmm. for that and maybe then once we install it, oh yeah, 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 there. yeah. Okay. Okay, we got a lot. Once we get that uh, software installed. Let me take a look after this meeting um, or after years of your lunch break. 22 to 41 minutes. Tomorrow. My lunch break goes to um, 3.30 today. Okay. No, I'm leaving at uh, <laughs> dinner today. <laughs> till to, till midnight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is that, did, you said uh, automatically assign new meters for the one. You said yes to that one. The, 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 option, the automatic. He said, "You guys said yes to that, right?" I think so. Okay, and it was twenty-two to forty-four, or twenty-two yes. to forty-one. Twenty-two to forty-four. And it was five oh two for the fourth, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> hey, oh, something. Stop. The word things. Really name things, but things. So did you run a repair on it? And that was the dress? Because when I was hey, doing yeah. the uh, install, I looked at the um, I looked at the options for the postgrade install and it didn't actually start the the database. That could be that could be scary. <laughs> could be gold, could be oh, great. Uh, I just took you off mute, so it, sounds, it looks like you got it going. I was just had somebody checking, and uh, so I may just let them go because it looks like you got it going. Yeah, so it was that um, it was the database just wasn't um, wasn't started. Oh, okay. Or the the cluster wasn't. Started. Okay. Um, yeah, as soon as this guy comes back, I'll let him know we. <laughs> we got it going. So <laughs> he was he was trying to talk me into doing a Teams meeting. I'm like, well, we're already on Zoom. Can you guys just <laughs> join a Zoom meeting? <laughs> so, but anyways, all right. Um, just point the the two computers at each other. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all right. So yeah, this may take a little bit to get to. What do we have up to forty? Yeah, and I just noticed on my list, 41 was actually one of the BACnet gateways, so that shouldn't show up on your list, but, um, oh, actually, you wouldn't see the IP. Um, if you want, you can, I think it's in, in the blue uh, title bar where it says meter name and all that. I think if you right-click in there, you can add columns. Yeah, so if you wanted to add, like, the uh, IP address, for example, I think that's in there somewhere. Connection. Mm. Oh, there you go. Yeah. 
And we didn't need the colon 502, by the way. It, it didn't pick them up without that. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, I just saw one of the instruction Thanks. sheets. We've got up to 38, almost there. Well, the the num the meter numbers are 40, 41, but the IP addresses are a bit off that. Yeah, so we have to get rid of two. He said 41 was like the gateway, so it won't register that. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so you should have meters up through 40, 39 and 40. Are those, well, the meters 39 and 40 are there. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant IP addresses. Yeah, yeah. I only ask because sometimes they'll request more, one or two more than they actually need. A uh, crap, yeah. Could have done that. Hmm. Those, are all, right. those are all MP. 200, so they have or well, mo mostly 200, so they, they mostly have uh, mul multiple circuits under those, so it's it's more than just the, the point. Oh, so they could have consolidated some of them too. It's was it's like 20 times eight. <clears throat> oh, so there's okay. Well, I'm just gonna let him go, and he'll he may call me back, but um. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, what you'll see here is uh, it put them under Shark 250, and then there's a, a group called unassigned. So you can set up groups here, and then if you right click on one of the meters, you can say move to a group, um, among other things you can do with it, of course. But there's your, your three groups that are assigned. You can uh, pick other groups and, and that kind of thing. And then, um, so the main things you'd want to do is, well, once we find the rest of the meters, this is an easy place to look at what they're named. And you want, obviously, all the names need to be unique. Uh, there's a 16 digit uh, or 16 character limit on the name. So as Sean had come up with, it's, he's got this four digit number that should cover all of that. But you know, meters we set up years ago may still have some kind of name to where they're at. Um, you can also put a note field in here. Let me see if I have that on my other screen. Um, meter time connection. Oh, I think I did that on a different site. There's a meter notes. Yeah, so if you wanted to add some notes in this screen that doesn't really I don't think apply to anything else any of the other softwares that I know of but <clears throat> yeah fat fingered uh, connecting to that first meter there's a big delay on our network I don't really know why okay no problem anyway uh, oh. Okay, so part of what this does is it's a, a shortcut to all these things you just pulled up there. So you can say connect to meter basically means, you know, start com communicator PQA and connect to the meter. Although some of the things take you right to a particular screen within communicator PQA. So for example, the um, where it says real time readings or show phasers, um, configure meter profile. Those basically are opening up communicator PQA and going right to that particular screen, which just saves you, you know, opening it and hitting that icon or whatever. Um, so configure meter profile, that's all the settings, of course, that kind of thing. Um, so those are kind of shortcut type things. Um, you could click retrieve meter logs here, but what we would do, we'll set it up to automatically retrieve the meter logs. You can also retrieve meter logs within communicator PQA. Um, if you do it with a meter manager, it kind of happens in the background. You really don't see it happening. So if you're trying to do one to look at some data right when it's done, I sometimes recommend doing that in communicator because then you can kind of see when it's done as opposed to trying to <laughs> find out when it, when it actually finished. Um, uh, part of the thing with a communicator is what it does when it's done. 
downloading a log, it actually automatically pops open the uh, view logs um, screen. So they're they're kind of like little, uh, almost like little sub programs or such. Um, Kevin, can I put a quick question in? Um, yeah. I, maybe I missed this when you first opened it up, um, or I'm just unfamiliar with these software packages. But meter manager monitor, or the yeah, the meter manager PQA, that's mm -hmm. a completely separate application from communicator PQA, not a tool within it, right? Uh, correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So they they link back and forth to each other, but correct. They're they're separate entities. Thanks. That um, clarifies a lot. <laughs> yeah. Within, yeah. Within communicator PQA, there's a meter manager icon at the top. Is that just a shortcut that just automatically opens up the meter manager separate application? Exactly. Yes. I see. Thank you. That yeah. Helps. Yeah. Yeah, their, their stuff is kind of modular in that respect. Um, another example, I, I don't know if this would apply to you, but yeah, right click on a meter again and uh, pick um, real time readings, for example. And so that's like logging into the meter and then hitting the polling uh, icon on the screen. So this little thing. Um, what's interesting about this window and also the energy and phaser windows with income EQA, these can be pulled up with a shortcut um, that doesn't really require you to completely start communicator PQA. Um, I don't know if this would apply to your building automation system, but if that's something you could use or launch, um, you could do that. I know we've done it with uh, Wonderware, for example, where instead of creating these screens within Wonderware, they basically just wrote a little uh, pointer uh, script, I think you might call it, um, and said, OK, pull up this screen. And as long as communicator is running on that same computer that Wonderware is running on, it'll, it'll pull that up and just save them a whole lot of time and creating all these screens for all these meters. They just have a preset screen that's already there. So um, a side note. To, uh, to Robert, Doug, um, if you pull up a browser and you punch in the IP address, it'll pull up a screen that has data on that meter. And so if there's like potentially buildings that are of interest to you guys, you could potentially just punch those in and just bookmark it. And that way you oh, really? bookmarks, click on, oh, okay. you know, ECS panels, yeah. this and this, and it just, memorized it'll have that saved so that you can just pull it up so as an example we could try one of those now if, just if you could pull it yes, the, the only thing is the the mp200s don't have web pages but the shark 250s 270s uh i'm trying to think of what else you have nexus meters i don't think you have any nexus those all have web pages so if you pick that if you just hit okay on that window it'll go away um uh, just real quick, the pause um, is just pausing the polling, right? It's not actually affecting any operation. Uh, correct. I, to be honest, I've never used that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure that's all it does. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so take that IP address and put it in a web browser. And you can see the, so the web page for that meter. I know what we have on this thing. Pause power. Oh, web browser. Dude, that would be awesome. <laughs> I'd be like, this is the greatest app ever. Uh, hey Walter, do you know what we have on that thing for a browser? Uh, you should have. Uh, well, you don't have Chrome in there. Uh, no, it should I... be Edge for now, which is probably not a good one. Explorer, yeah. Not even Edge. <laughs> uh, the old Internet Explorer. Uh -oh. <laughs> Well, it's not it's not technically online, so we're good. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we can put uh, Chrome in there. So. I'll, I'll put Chrome on it. So yeah. Good. And the web pages are handy for the BMS guys if they're setting up a meter and they just want to confirm the readings from the meter to what the BMS is. You know, make sure it's scaled correctly and that kind of thing. You can just compare it. You can just uncheck that and click add. 
So, um, Kevin, a uh, quick one for you. Um, from the, there's some blurry, uh, undefined lines between BAS and electrical and our various groups over here, but I think energy and BAS are more interested in the historical stuff right now from the, the, uh, that, that we'll be pulling from that database. Um, I think, right, Sean? Anything live data wise is probably just going to be through the <clears throat> communicator or, or the web in that case. Yes. Um, oh, so anyway, while, while you're on the screen on the left side where it says pages, you can click different items there if you wanted to say power and energy, for example. It just there's your harmonics. So you do have some different screens within this web browser. So those are all built into the, the meter. So um, you can get so Can we download data from this screen or no? Uh, no, it's just a real-time viewing screen. Are, are all of the values on here, like the power quality, um, phase info and stuff, are those all being trended and pulled back to the main um, uh, no, no, those are uh, just all the real time readings. So, uh, yeah, you're not looking at any historical data on the web page. Um, what gets logged is it depends on what's set up in the in the profile for your logging. Um, yeah, if you want to look at that, I can kind of explain that to you. It's maybe easier to see. So you can, if you want to close the browser, I'll. Um, so it's good for just a snapshot of live live data without having to open up. An application yeah. and you just go to bookmarks. Um, so, yeah, right, uh, right click on that Shark 250. That's and, um, 12, 1236. So, there's that's an MP200. Oh, oh, yeah, let's, let's do the Shark 250. It's probably easier. To, well, yeah, it doesn't matter. This one's fine. Um, go to um, what is it? Configure meter profile towards the bottom. So this would be the same as opening communicator PQA and clicking the button that says profile. This is all the settings within the meter itself. And then on your uh, left side there, uh, we should have trending here somewhere. Uh, aggregators, pulse, trending profiles towards the bottom. So the way they do it is depending on the meter, you have different uh, logs that you can log data into and one of the reasons you might want to pick different logs is you may have one log that logs every 15 minutes another log that logs every minute uh, or just to group different things together maybe energy in one log and maybe uh, you know volts and amps in another log which is kind of some of what they have here so if you click on historical log profile one on the left menu um, yeah so this shows um, on the left side, it says add items from group. Those, those are the items that are available to log. On the right side are the items that are already configured. And then down towards the bottom, it tells you it's logging all those values every 15 minutes. And with how we have the memory uh, allocated, this log will give you five months and 12 days of data uh, with those values. And then, um, so your man phase angles. So, some of these things you may need. Uh, so click on profile two. Um, so what are we on? Oh, we are on a Shark 250. Okay. If we were on an MP200, what you would see is eight different meters listed. Um, so that's why I noticed this here. Um, so you have a couple of different things and we'll go over this in the class but there's interval energy and just regular uh wh you know watt hour um but we have it set up in different ways this we'll save this for the class to explain all this stuff um so that's that's what's being logged you can change some of those things but a lot of the defaults are kind of the basic stuff you need and they also do bi-directional. So if you have solar or you have generators or battery backup, whatever, it'll tell you how much power is coming from 
the the uh, grid and how much is coming from whatever your other source is because it can tell which way the power is going and it keeps track of those separately so it adds them up separately um, so for example with a with a solar building um, what you would see is as the day gets brighter and the solar comes online there's a good chance the uh, electricity coming in will will fade off and the electricity going out will will ramp up if it is creating more energy than the building uses for example so um, so again so these are kind of the logs so this is what you'd be seeing and um, what's being stored in there and you can rearrange those um, so uh, if we go to uh, I guess yeah, well, we can save most of this for the, the class we're going to do in the next couple of weeks, I think. Um, if you hit, well, while we're on the screen, just to kind of show you, there's two things you can do. Um, there's one that says report. Actually, go ahead and click on report icon at the top. That just creates a text file of all the settings of the meter, it gives you the serial number and all that. So usually anytime we configure a meter, or change a configuration, we would save this just so we have a backup copy of it. Uh, certain meters actually now do it in a HTML file instead of a text file, but um, so you can save the and usually just save the, save it as a name of the meter so that that's a text file there. Uh, so you can close that. The other options are save, uh, which would save an actual file that can be opened with CompuQA to load into another meter or load into that. Same meter, so. Um, so you can close this window. Uh, so the other one was uh, save save and open are are not text files per se. Those are saving this profile uh, file that can be used with com PQA to load into another meter. So uh, we don't have to do those now. Is that is it settings report or or that save is that there, yeah kind of the same thing the report is a is a text file versus the save is a file that can only be used with com pqa um oh, so if you wanted to save this and then have to you know, have it to load into another you couldn't load the text file into a meter but you could load the file that's under the saved portion I forget right. what the, uh, the uh, extension is to that file, but. I was saying, are those saving to the default locations we selected when, when we're starting the, the software up at the beginning? Uh, correct, yes. Yes, it may give you the option to change the directory when you hit save, but um, it may not, so. Uh, you could try, you can hit save if you want, because it's. Some errors in the programming settings. Um, yeah, go ahead and hit yes. We'll just see if those make any sense. Oh, yeah, I think this one just goes away. <laughs> I think I've seen this before. So let's hit the, that. And still like to save, hit yes. And OK, yeah, so there's your it just goes to that default, yeah. default. And the reason they have all those default folders in there is because they have some default uh, configurations or profiles in there so if you were offline you weren't connected to a meter and you just wanted to start a profile or you know of all the settings for a meter you could pull one up and do that so so yeah go ahead and exit editor so the main things uh, we're not really going to uh do today but just to show you how they work is the uh, scripts so if you Top of it, there's uh, configure groups, group scripts is the one we want. So let me move my little menu thing here. So the first one is the one that we would set up. So you, what we want to do is before we set up automatic logging, um, we want to look at all the meters, make sure they have unique <coughs> names, they're named what you want them named. Um, and then we can turn this on. And what you might do is set up, uh, you can say every 12 hours, every 24 hours, and you might pick some different times. So let's say you got 50 meters in one group, 
say, let's do that at 1 a.m. and then maybe pick the next group, say, let's do that at, you know, 2, 2 or 3 a.m., you know, maybe just do it in the middle of the night is what most people do. And then you can actually pick which logs you want to grab. Usually we just leave them all there. So that's something that can be easily turned on. But if we did it now, it would start logging these. Um, well, these all have proper names, so we could do that if you wanted to turn that on. And then by the time we have the class, we'll have, have some data uh, logged. Uh, so if you've got the right directory you want, and we got a proper name. Yeah, that's, that all sounds fine. The security tab there is if you, I guess I, guess I shouldn't say if you, is when you set up passwords on the meters, because we'll, you'll probably want to do that, um, then it'll allow you to put that password information in here so that it can get through and grab the data, um, but it kind of protects the meters from being accidentally changed or purposely changed, I guess, without somebody knowing the password. Um, the items down the right, so resets, that's if you were doing, um, the meter keeps track of min, mins and maxes for things like amperages and voltages. And it basically, the let's say the maximum from when the last time it was reset. So in most cases, unless you're resetting, it's, it's from whenever the meter was powered up the first time. So you could do this, say, every first of the month, you know, reset those things. Uh, the other thing it does, it does have a demand in there that it can uh, reset and keep track of. Um, but with the logging, you kind of get that demand anyway. Um, and it can sort out, you know, when that demand happened also. Uh, the software time sync, that, that one's important because since all the meters have their own clocks, and they're time stamping all their logins, both of events and of just regular KWH and such. Uh, this is something we would want to do. But the suggestion would be in the meters, it has an option for doing um, daylight savings time. And so what we've found is probably better to have that enabled in the meter, the daylight savings time setting. Um, that way it happens right when daylight saving times happens at that meter versus waiting for this software. Uh, I don't know how often it does it, probably once or twice a day, you know, comes around and sets the time. Well, that wouldn't happen maybe at, you know, 2 a.m. in the morning when you're supposed to set your reset your clock. So, um, so we would do a combination of setting the sync on and doing the daylight savings. Um, and then the long, log archive options, um, again, is where we say, okay, when it gets to a certain size or it gets to a certain number of months or years or whatever, uh, close up that database, store it into a different directory and start a new database so we're not getting too huge a database. So, and that, that's something you can decide to do later. Um, I guess the only other thing is if you might move these into different groups might be the only other question. Uh, I don't know, Sean, have you thought about that? How you might want to group these or do you want to think about it some more? Um, I, I think so. I think it might make sense to, to group the recharge customers in their own little groupings, um, but I, I can always, uh, can, we, can we change those later? Uh, we can, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that, and since the logs are tied to the, um, meter and not to a group, uh, then yeah, that, that shouldn't be a problem for, uh, we could enable the logging and then we can um, do that later. Yeah, you can change the groups later and it shouldn't, shouldn't affect anything. It's just how their group, the only thing you all want to look at is how you have a script set up for a group. Um, so if we enable logging now and you move it to a different group, we'll just want to make sure that group has logging enabled. So. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're, we're planning to enable logging for all meters. Um, I don't want to restrict any meters. Oh, correct. Yeah. So um, I don't mean to pump the brakes too hard on it. I did want to double check though, with all the defaults set, we did install this to the C drive, not the E drive. So not only are those defaults C, but also from what I can tell, the database itself is on C, not E. Um, and that's probably a bigger deal to move, right? Oh, yeah, that's probably the database program, not the database files. 
So yeah, um, the files are in the, the, the user's space. Um, so if we just yeah. manually move those, it's possible to repoint it? Um, well, I, I would just leave those there because that's, the again, the program part of it, not the, the files. And for example, if, if uh, Sean puts this software on his computer, um, it would install the database program there, but it will be looking at files from the remote drive. So you can, you should be able to just leave those alone. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, actually, since all these have kind of unique names and such, we could go ahead and on the right side, click on the retrieve. Uh, oh, that's retrieve meter one time. Let's hit configure under retrieve logs for this group. Kevin, we've got uh, five minutes uh, left, so I just kind of want to. Okay. I just kind of give you that warning. Configure. Yeah, right? yeah, configure. Yeah, and that's good to know. That I think will be good. We'll just set these up to start logging some data, and then uh, when we have our, our class, we should have some data to look at. So, yeah, Listen, go ahead and hit that configure button. That seems to be grayed out. Oh, um, good luck for this group. Uh, Hmm. I'm not sure what's happening there. Uh, Do I have to hit? Well, I yeah, hit cancel and then maybe we'll open it back up. See if there is something I thought we were doing. Huh. Configure or should. Yeah, dude. So that is grayed out then, right? This one? Yeah. yeah. I checked the chart 250. Also seems to be. So that, yeah, I can't even, I can't scroll. I can see that there's a scroll here, but I can't scroll down. Hmm, okay. Or I guess maybe there, yeah. All right, yeah, we'll have to check into that. So, so I guess the other question to get into this um the setup part this would really only be done on the server so i'm not sure who will have remote access to the server um if it's uh just brian i don't know if sean will have access to that or maybe at least the three of us uh walter yeah um so should we do that part separately so we can uh I don't know what else you wanted to cover. Right yeah, now. that was that was the main things we were going to do is just okay. kind of set that up. But yeah, we can come back and do this. I'll have to see if I can figure out why that's grayed out. Um, so, just okay. An interjection here, uh, yep. Robert and Doug. Once once we get this set up in the location, um, you guys should have access either through ComEXT or our our com or communicator PQA to pull the trends and uh, look at the log data um, and, and retrieve open those logs. As long as it's pointed to the right uh, folder. So maybe that first time kind of pointing it to the right folder, um, we'll have to get it set up. But once it's set up, you'll have access to all these leaders and data. Well, we would typically always use PQA, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get you the file there. Uh, and, and for the need to put in the um, yeah, yeah, you don't need to put in the key because only the uh, the one that's on the server. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the remote computers don't necessarily need the professional mode, which has the meter manager, um, because that's basically just automating the download, and obviously you don't want to do that from more than one computer anyway. Um, but once it's downloaded, as long as you have access to that database or that uh, folder or folders, um, then you can get to that data through com PQA, pull up logs that have been downloaded and, and things like that. So yeah, that's the basic kind of kind of setup for you and overview. And again, we can go into more details. We do our class and I can't remember, did we set it to the day yet or that's something we were gonna talk about? Um, I. I think we'll set it up for two two weeks from now, Kevin. And uh, okay. yeah, I'll check with you and your calendar, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and send the invite on that one. 
Uh, but I'll, I'll check in with you either later today or tomorrow to uh, identify a good date and time. Okay. Where I can get in front of my calendar easily. Gotcha. Okay. So if you need help uh, installing the software on your machine, Sean, let me know. And uh, I think uh, Brian will leave a copy of the executable in, in the server so we can access it and install it. Right, because you want to run this software on your desktop or not? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so yes. I'll need a I'll need a copy of this software somewhere so I can install it for you. Sean okay. shot a uh, uh, email over just before the meeting with um, with the install or with a link to it on a share. Perfect. Okay, so I can put it in, and then uh, is there a way to just uh, save the configuration and then just import it into the new install so it has all these meters and everything already there configured? That's a good um, well, actually, you wouldn't wouldn't necessarily have the meter manager on on his computer. He would generally just leave that on the server. Um, there is something called a connection database, which again is a um, or a connection manager. That's what they call it. Um, that's like an address book that you can definitely save and share and all that. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Yeah, I can go over. Once that's set up, you can you can copy that. Um, oh, actually, if you pull up meter manager, meter manager one more time, I was just going to check under the. Uh, I don't know if the folders are automatically set up there under tools at the top. Um, system probably. And system options, I think. And pass, yeah. Okay, yeah. So those we probably have to change. Uh, com mxt, that's probably okay. But the retrieve logs path and the archive log path, just those bottom two, change to the E drive. We didn't end up doing that though, did we? Oh, oh, okay. Left them on the C. That's right. All right. Yeah. Okay, but if you ever change it, just remember you got to change it here also. Okay. All right. I th yeah, I think we're kind of out of time. So if that. Um, the only other question I've got, uh, well, I'm sure I have more, but one one of the ones was uh, we do auto reboot this machine. Um, well, somebody smarter than me does. Um, so that's something to keep in mind and probably a question for you, Walter, uh, as to when that's happening. And uh, so that we don't have that overlap with any um, with any uh, scheduled long running tasks. OK, yeah, it's uh, at the end of the month, uh, they might reboot this server as they do security updates on the OS. Yeah. So it would have to be the 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 last week of the month, basically. I can send you the email when they're about to do it, the day that they will do it, because they usually send me an email saying, hey, we're going to do this this morning. Is it just, is it periodically or is it? Uh, monthly, monthly. So it, yeah, so it is the same, the same one. So if these are going out every day or however, however often they're retrieving from the, from the, um, Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just a quick, uh, you know, they do a security update on the operating system and then they reboot it right away and then comes up again and we is, check is to that, see if there's any problems. Is that typically during normal business hours? Walter? No, it's, it's a, well, it's around four in the morning. Oh, okay. So I know you guys, some of you are pretty there's, early, but <laughs> yeah. There's a um, specific time range that they typically reboot. Perhaps we can just schedule the trends yeah. to not pull during that. Right. Yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> <always> okay. <laughs> yeah. So if it's always around four a.m. Um, on the last day of the month or the first day of the month? Uh, typically around the last day of the month. We can. Uh, okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks yeah, basically, it's, it's like the last Friday of the month is that they do it. Yeah. Whatever the last Friday of the month is, that's when they do it around four in the morning. 
You said last Friday, wasn't it? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Walter, do you care then if we leave everything configured on the C drive, or should we? Um, should we uh, just leave it? Yeah, it? just leave it. We can increase the the size if we have to. Okay. It doesn't seem like it was that big of a deal if you want. It's just uninstall and, and uh, or I guess not even uninstall, just move. The, yeah, just, the just leave it. It's okay. Yeah. Not and easy. then uh, uh, what I'll do uh, is I will uh, share that folder that, that and then uh, then we can mount it on your, you know, as a network drive. And then when we install the software on your local machines, we can point to that network drive so you can access the latest data. And then would I have access, can I have access to the meter manager, perhaps I, would I have to log into the server through a remote desktop to open it and make the changes? I don't think so. I think you can run everything. Yeah, the yeah. data is in a single location, so you should be able to run everything. Yeah, the meter manager is a separate app, so you really shouldn't, right? Yeah, you, you would need to access meter manager, the program meter manager from the server. So yeah, you need a remote access or Oh, so something. meter manager's license software then? Correct. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. So the other one for viewing, it's it's okay. Yeah, just, yeah. just doing okay. the data, but, but actually the, the, the data. Oh, okay, I see. Okay, makes sense. I think that, that covers it. I, I can send the uh, follow-up uh, invite, Kevin, and then I'll, I'll probably end up calling you to develop an agenda that we can uh, develop or put together for that meeting. Okay, yeah, and like we said, if you wanna kind of divide it up to, you know, um, the audience. So, you know, electricians are probably interested in uh, installation and verification of installation versus IT wouldn't care about that and vice versa. Some things IT cares about, electricians wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we might be able to kind of separate it off based on different time periods. And uh, so we can talk about that in detail. Sure. Okay. Is that follow up in two weeks, the one where you wanted to have data available? Uh, yes. Okay, so, so soon we should reschedule to, to get those things communicating. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be okay. uh, cleaning up my database, the making sure the meter names are in the four digit barcode and then um, Setting those, right, uh, Mohammed? those files. Uh, but I'll have to get the you know, RPC login from Walter so I can get access to the meter manager. Um, you can get that. Um, I, I can get that. Oh. Uh, we have our action. Okay, that, that, that uh, just about wraps it up. Do you guys have any other questions or, before we sign off? That's so, it. Kevin? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Walter. Right. Okay. Sounds right. good. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Mohammed? Uh, okay. Sorry. I was, um, we were finishing up a meeting here. Uh, we actually got it working. Um, well, I think you're hosting, actually. Yeah. I was just going to